Hello and welcome to D&D Daily. My name is Sage and today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Arcana Domain subclass from the Cleric class. In this video I'm going to go through the subclass's features, discuss their weaknesses and strengths, and do an example build at the end of the video. Before jumping into the video I want to talk about how I go about evaluating a subclass. I like my characters to be functional and be fun to play, but I also like them to be unique and flavorful. So if there's something in the subclass that is completely unique, but it's weaker than what the base class can do, I'm still going to do the unique thing at the expense of that power level. It's just a personal preference, but in those cases, I will let you know that yes, this is probably a lower power level than it could have been, so you can make the choice for yourself. With that out of the way, without further ado, let's jump in to the Arcana Domain. At level 1, we're going to get proficiency in the Arcana skill. We're going to get magic missiles and detect magic spells. And we're also going to get two wizard cantrips. Getting two wizard cantrips is pretty awesome because it opens up unique niche builds. It opens up more combat utility. And it also opens up more just out of combat utility. So there's a lot we can do with this. A pretty neat side effect is that once we get to level 8, we're going to get our potent spell casting. And how this reads is when we do damage with our cantrip, we get to add our wisdom modifier. This includes the wizard cantrips we choose, so those cantrips that do damage more than once, we get to add that wisdom modifier more than once. Acid Splash, Green Flame Blade, and Booming Blade are all good examples of this. This opens up some unique close combat builds for this subclass, though I think this subclass is more designed to be a long-ranged caster. These wizard cantrips can also help us in that regard because they can give us spells like Firebolt, which has a range of 120 feet, which is twice the range of any of the cleric cantrips. So now we can still be a long-ranged spellcaster, but we can do it at twice the range, keeping us much safer. So it's a fantastic option for us. And because we can take two cantrips, we have enough room to still take a utility cantrip like Mage Hand or Minor Illusion that can add more to what you can do out of combat and sometimes even in combat. Now earlier I mentioned that we are not built for combat, and what I meant by that is we don't have heavy armor proficiency, nor do we have martial weapons proficiency, which other clerics have that help them get in there and tangle with the enemies. For us, we don't have those things, so it makes more sense for us to play a little bit back. Moving to our other level 1 feature where we get proficiency on Arcana, that is not going to be a huge deal most of the time. However, when we're casting Dispel Magic or Detect Magic, Arcana can often be a skill that's called upon in those situations and can help us decide which spell level to cast Dispel Magic at so we're not wasting higher level spell slots to make sure that we get that Dispel off. Moving into our spells, we have Magic Missile, which although it's a damaging spell, I often consider it a utility spell. The reason for that is because it never misses, hits multiple times, it's really great for breaking enemies' concentration if they don't have the shield spell. Or it can be used if for whatever reason you want to kill a downed enemy who's getting death saving throws. A single level cast of magic missiles basically guarantees that they're dead unless it gets counterspelled. Or sometimes it's really great just for taking out that heavily wounded enemy and just making sure they die this turn. Moving on to our Detect Magic, this is something that all clerics get, and it's just a staple ritual. We are a ritual caster, so we can take advantage of that. And it's kind of nice to have pre-prepared on our spell list, because we were probably going to take it at some point anyways, so now we can choose an extra spell. Moving to our second level, we get our Channel Divinity, which is called Arcane Abjuration. Arcane Abjuration is going to target a single Elemental, Celestial, Fey, or Fiend, and potentially turn them and potentially banish them if their CR is low enough. What's really nice about this channel of divinity is that if they fell it once, they do not get another saving throw. The only thing that's going to remove it is if they've been retreating for a full minute or if they take damage. So as long as your allies don't attack them, they're going to be leaving the combat pretty much. At level three, we get magic weapon and this stools, I think that's how you say it, magic aura. The magic aura is meant to fool people into thinking a item is magical or alternatively non-magical or even a different kind of magic. I don't see this coming up a ton but I have heard people talk about it being a money-making ploy where you can create a look-alike object, make it seem magical and swap places with the real magical item and then make that item not look magical. So it can be used for some sneaky things like that or you can just take a normal sword, make it look magical and sell it as if it is magical. There's some things you can do like that, and I think every now and again there might be an infiltration mission with someone who can detect magic, and this might be useful in that case. Overall, 
I think you either have to go out of your way to make this useful, or it's very situational, one of the two. As for magic weapon, the only time it's really gonna be worth our concentration is if we have a really strong marshal who is up against someone who is either immune or resistant to normal weapon damage, and they don't have a magic weapon already. So a very specific situation, but one I can see coming up fairly often. At fifth level, we get our third level spells, which are Dispel Magic and Magic Circle. Magic Circle is going to open up a niche for us, but that's going to be at later levels. We'll get to that in a bit. Dispel Magic is something every cleric can do, but we are more specialized in doing it than other clerics. This begins with us being proficient in the Arcana skill, which most clerics probably aren't going to take. It also just really fits flavor-wise as a spellbreaker, which is kind of a niche that we can pull off, which brings me to our sixth level feature, Spellbreaker. For me, this is the defining feature of the early and mid levels of the Arcana domain. How Spellbreaker works is when we cast a healing spell on our ally, we can also end a magical effect, so long as it's equal to or lower than the level that we use to cast the healing spell. No save, no check, no nothing, it just ends. This is pretty awesome. It makes healing word change from a, hey, get up off the ground spell to a dispel magic that can be targeted for something specific. So if you have an ally who's been blessed, you don't really want to cast dispel magic on them to remove the magical poison condition because it also gets rid of bless. This is a specific feature that allows you to target only the poison condition and rip it off of them while they get to keep bless. It's also efficient spell-wise. If it's a second level spell, we don't have to burn a third level spell to remove it, we can use a second level spell. And with spells like Mass Healing Word, we can do a total party elimination of a magic effect. So if the party gets hypnotic patterned, feared, slowed, we have a wisdom saving throw, so we're likely going to pass it, and if the rest of our party doesn't, we can use a Mass Healing Word to pull them all back into the combat with one action. Really awesome. This gives us another reason to be happy that we have the Arcana proficiency, because with that, we might be able to tell what exactly spell level it's at, and so we don't waste any of those extra spell levels, and we cast our healing spell at the perfect level to remove it. Personally, from level 6 onward, I'm always going to have healing word, and I'm always going to have mass healing word. It's just something that makes this class different and unique, and it might not come up all the time, but when it does come up, it's super impactful. At 7th level, we get our 4th level spells, which is going to be Arcane Eye and Leoman's Secret Chest. Arcane Eye is a premium scouting tool. It can be used to go check out the area before the day of the event. If you're infiltrating a house, for example, you can scout it out before going there the next day, so you still have full spell slots. Or it can simply be used to go to the next room to make sure that as you're going through the dungeon, you and your party are going to be safe. It's really fantastic. In my opinion, Liam and Secret Chest is totally slept on. And I think it's slept on because the last line scares people away from it. It basically says, if you die, choose to, or if you let the spell run for 60 days, there's a 5% chance that you're going to lose the items in their interdimensional plane. However, so long as we're not dying, so long as we're not putting things in it that the party needs, so even if we do die, they're okay to lose, then that isn't going to be a big risk because every now and again, we're gonna have a day off and we can use our fourth level spell slot to renew our chest or chests. And once you have it, it's pretty sweet what you can do with it. If you need to sneak into an event but want to bring all your weapons, lay them in secret chest. If you want to have all your gold stored in a chest so you can never be pickpocketed, lay them in secret chest. It's also kind of cool because you can just catalog your items. One secret chest and brings your, your base chest, and in that chest you have a bunch of other secret chests, and you can choose which ones and have categories. Oh, here are my magic daggers, and pull out your secret chest for that. Now note that in order to use this spell, you need to purchase a 5,000 gold piece chest and a 50 gold piece replica. So every chest is going to be a 5,000 50 gold piece investment before your fourth level spell. But once you have it up, for the next 60 days, you can just kind of bring it in and out as you will. I think it's awesome. I would personally use it lots. At level 8, we either get Potent Spellcasting or Blessed Strikes. Both are completely viable. You can choose either one and your character is not going to feel vastly different. However, if you're going for that melee niche build that you can do with the Arcana Domain, then take Blessed Strikes because you're going to be able to do your weapon attack and your cantrip, so you're going to get a little more out of it in that case. Ninth level brings Teleportation Circle and Planar Binding. Planar Binding isn't going to be super useful at this level because binding a creature for 24 hours for the gold price just really isn't worth it. It's going to come online a bit later, 
We'll get to that in a moment. As for teleportation circle, it's just a teleportation that most clerics can't do that lets you get around the world, making us be that one step closer to the utility casters. We don't get anything at level 11, but it's important to talk about nonetheless because it's when a very particular niche of the Arcana domain comes online. This is where we get our sixth level spell, which means we can upcast planar binding to keep our creature that we bind for a week. Now we're gonna combine this with our fifth level spell, Summon Celestial. Now you cannot concentrate on Summon Celestial while you're doing a spell that takes longer than an action to cast because that also requires concentration. So how do we maintain concentration on both those spells? Well, what we do is we use a Glyph of Warding with a Summon Celestial inside it. So we have to upcast Glyph of Warding to fifth level with a Summon Celestial inside it that basically says, when touched, summon the Celestial. Now, since we're not the ones who summoned it, the Celestials don't have to listen to us technically, but there's no one to give them orders, so all they're going to do is either run away or take the dodge action. Now, if we want to keep them from running away, that's where Magic Circle comes in from our third level spell. So, at level 11, we use our sixth level spell for Planar Binding, our fifth level spell for Glyph of Warding, our second fifth level spell for Summon Celestial, and our third level spell of Magic Circle to invert the circle to keep the Celestial there. Now, we also have a down payment of 1,300 gold to cast all those spells, Planar Binding costing 1,000, the other two costing an accumulation of 300 gold pieces. Now once all of this is done, so long as the Celestial fails its Charisma saving throw, we now have that Summon Celestial for a week, and we can do this every single day so long as we have the gold. Now personally, I'm going to flavor this, not as a wizard who's, you know, summoning things by ripping the magic in and kind of forcing it upon them. I'm going to do it more cleric -y. I'm going to be praying to this Celestial, asking for help. And if it doesn't want to help me, it doesn't have to. And that's how I would flavor the Charisma save, is trying to convince it to, to help me. And so this character, for me, is going to be lawful good, because that's how I would flavor this and play it. But there is a niche for you that only Arcana Domain can pull off. I don't think any other class or subclass can pull off this combination save for a bard who uses their magical secrets to set it up, and that's a huge expense for them. We get it basically naturally. So it's something only we can really do, and so it's something I'm absolutely going to do if I'm playing the Arcana Domain. Now this combo only gets better as we continue leveling up, because our Summon Celestials are going to get stronger, our Planar Binding is going to last longer, and eventually we're going to be able to do Conjure Celestial, and now we can get even more creatures. So our options only expand. Now finally, at level 17, we get to choose from the wizard's spell list a 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th level spell. That is an insane jump in power that most clerics aren't even going to be touching. This is a premier capstone for a, a subclass, especially for clerics. We are definitely going to take Wish for the 9th level spell, and I'm also personally taking Force Cage. But there's a lot of optionality here that you can use to pull off whatever you want. Even take Meteor Swarm with your ninth level spell, so you can fly on a Pegasus that you've bound to this realm and drop meteors from the sky, followed by your chorus of angels. That's only something an Arcana Domain is pulling off, and it's more glorious and celestial than any other cleric can pull off. That is just, that is true divine power right there. So moving into the example build, there are a ton of builds we can do here. There's a ton of flexibility, especially once you hit level 17. But for me, when I take my two cleric cantrips, I would start with Firebolt and be a long-ranged spellcaster, kind of more fitting the niche that the, the subclass is designed for rather than forcing it to be a hit-and-run striker. I would use my medium armor and a shield, and because I have Firebolt, I would be able to stay further back than my other cleric counterparts could. I would play pretty much a standard cleric until level 11, except every now and again I would use our 6th level feature Spellbreaker to break some spells along the way. At level 11, I would begin summoning my Celestials. And like I said before, I wouldn't do this in a wizardy way, I would do it in a very cleric-y way to fit my flavor. At level 17, I'm definitely picking Wish, and I'm definitely picking Force Cage, and I'll leave the other two for whatever I feel like in that glorious moment. As for roleplay, I'm going to use all these arcane spells not because I've studied long and hard, but because I've prayed for it. So instead of Wish being something that I grapple the fabric of reality and force it to my will, it's, it would be a gentle prayer that I, I ask for something full of faith and the God does it, rather than me myself. 
Something to note about the Arcana domain is that most clerics kind of start falling off of power level comparison to other full casters from level 11 and on. That is not the case for the Arcana domain cleric. So from levels 5 to 11, we're going to be powerful based on the merits of just being a cleric. Clerics are really powerful from those levels. Now from 11 on, the Arcana subclass is really going to be carrying us into those later levels, giving us our army of angels, giving us wish, and so many more things. It's just so powerful, and that's something that most clerics cannot claim. Now, what would you do with your Arcana Domain Cleric? What would you do to make ours cooler? What did I miss? What's something else unique that I could pull off? Let me know in the comments down below. We are D&D Daily. We release new D&D content every single day, so if that's interesting to you, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.